Well, Universal Studios' Islands of Adventure is now home to two of the greatest roller coasters of all time with the Velocicoaster and Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure, for almost 20 years, the park housed two completely different groundbreaking rides. Up until the launch of Islands of Adventure in 1999, Universal Studios was known for a collection of impressive motion simulators, dark rides, and tram tours that took visitors into the worlds of classic films. But with their new park, Universal Creative hoped to cater to an older thrill seeker audience. With one of the biggest rides in Orlando situated in the Lost Continent area of Islands of Adventure, the inverted coaster Dueling Dragons was an iconic fixture of the park before its Harry Potter wreath theme and eventual closure in 2017. Developed by B&M, guests were able to choose to ride either the Red Fire Dragon or the Blue Ice Dragon track and face off in one of the most thrilling attractions at a Universal Park. While Dragon Challenge would close to make way for the fantastic Hagrid's Motorbike Adventure in 2017, the park's other opening Day coaster continues to not only be one of the best attractions at a Universal Park, but one of the best coasters ever built. Welcome back to another episode of Theme Park Lore, where today we'll be breaking down the history and lore of Islands of Adventure's classic roller coaster, the Incredible Hulk Coaster. After Universal expanded into the Orlando market with the launch of Universal Studios Florida in 1990, work quickly began on creating a second addition to the resort. While the Florida park was full of great attractions like Back to the Future the Ride and E.T. Adventure, the original park was far from the destination that Disney World was. In an effort to compete with Disney and grow the company's share in the Florida theme park market, work began in the early 1990s to expand Universal Studios into a two-park resort. Intended to build off of Disney's framework, the then-called Cartoon World would have utilized a hub-and-spokes approach similar to Magic Kingdom. From concept art for the proposed land, the park would have featured a large centerpiece area similar to Snow White's Castle, with different areas branching off around it themed to licensed properties. While this approach has certainly worked in the past, Islands of Adventure's themed lands that seamlessly connect into each other would not only lead to a drastically different theme park experience, but would also set the tone for how theme parks would be developed in the future. View of Cartoon World's original planned properties would see the light of day, with the characters of Dr. Seuss and Jay Ward being fully developed into Seuss Landing and Toon Lagoon, but the park's development would struggle after licensing negotiations with Warner Brothers would begin to falter. As the main IP owner of Cartoon World's proposed properties, Properties, the theme park was planned to feature both Looney Tunes characters and heroes from DC Comics. While Universal Studios had their own cartoon characters with Woody Woodpecker and Fievel Mouskowitz, on paper, Warner Brothers would have been the perfect partner for Universal to bring their characters to life. With attractions in the Looney Tunes land planned to feature a Wile E. Coyote coaster and a Duck Dodgers indoor coaster and dark ride, the area would have been a mix of what would turn into Seuss Landing and the Lost Continent. Warner's other area, DC Superhero Land, would have been split into Superman's Metropolis and Batman's Gotham City. With Metropolis planned to be a brighter and more friendly area and Gotham planned to resemble Tim Burton's darker take on the city, the plan sounds similar to how Universal would bring Diagon Alley Street to life in their original Florida park. Featuring a 3D dark ride resembling what we now know as the Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man, Superman's attraction would have taken guests through the Daily Bugle newspaper office before dropping down a 130-foot skyscraper. The Gotham City section of DC Superhero Land would feature a stunt show over the park's lagoon as well as two coasters. While the first coaster, an indoor Joker attraction with a wild mouse track, would not see the light of day, the land's hallmark attraction sounds remarkably similar to one of Islands of Adventure's biggest opening day attractions. Themed to a fight between Batman and the Penguin, riders would board either side of an inverted coaster that would simulate a mid-air dogfight between the titular hero and villain. While the concept art shows ride vehicles hanging from the coaster's track, it's clear that this concept eventually made its way over to the Lost Continent area of the park and became Dueling Dragons. When Warner Brothers ultimately pulled out of negotiations to pursue a new deal to bring Looney Tunes and DC Comics characters to Six Flags, Universal Creative would have to pursue new IP for much of the park. At the same time, DC's biggest competitor was in the middle of an economic spiral. Having barely survived the comic bubble bursting in the mid-1990s, Marvel Comics was on the brink of bankruptcy. Being recently acquired by action figure manufacturer Toy Biz, Marvel would begin to pursue quick licensing deals to bring in cash, with a string of animated TV shows, arcade games, and films being pumped out in the years that followed. While this would cause a headache for the company years later during its cinematic universe renaissance, licensing the characters Namor and the Incredible Hulk would open the door to begin theme park negotiations with Universal. Shifting their focus from DC to Marvel, Universal Creative would bring comic characters to Islands of Adventure through Marvel Superhero Island. Mainly taking inspiration from the animated TV shows of the day, the land would bring Marvel characters 
comes to life in the biggest way possible with some of the most groundbreaking theme park attractions of all time. While the 3D Dark Ride The Amazing Adventures of Spider-Man would be the area's most innovative attraction with its impressive theming, unique projection system, and immersive ride vehicle, the area's launched roller coaster would prove to be its biggest. Wanting to simulate what it felt like to transform into the Hulk, Universal Creative partnered with B&M and MTS Systems to simulate shooting guests out of a cannon. Universal Creative spent years developing the ride's signature launch, initially looking at incorporating systems for launching jets and transporting ore out of copper mines before finally setting on a tire-propelled launch mechanism. Incorporating 230 individual wheels, the ride vehicle is able to push through the tunnel at 1G, the fastest of any coaster at the time of its release. Initially prototyping the coaster's launch with a dune buggy connected to a pulley, different speeds and intensities were tested before settling on the most comfortable and thrilling launch they could for the coaster. Needing 8 megawatts of power to launch the coaster, Universal Creative had to develop their own electrical generators to run the ride in a way that would not destroy Orlando's power grids. With all that power, the ride vehicle is able to accelerate from 0 to 40 miles per hour in only 2 seconds, and later reach speeds of 67 miles per hour. Themed to the laboratory of Dr. Bruce Banner, guests make their way through switchbacks as they enter the queue building. Walking up a series of ramps, a queue video plays on various TVs that give context to the story of the ride. Having been blasted with gamma radiation previously, Dr. Banner is trying to find a way to reverse the accident's effects and needs guest help to conduct the experiment. By recreating the sequence of events that led to the birth of the Hulk, Banner plans to send guests through the gamma tube to attempt to remove the Hulk from his DNA. Making their way past power tubes, guests walk up the queue's ramps before entering the attraction's loading area. Boarding in groups of four, riders pull down the shoulder harnesses before the ride vehicle makes its way into the gamma tube. As riders begin their slow ascent up the hill, Dr. Banner tells guests that the test is starting and everything is going well. Being interrupted by a warning message, the test fails and as guests are blasted with gamma radiation, the ride vehicle makes its 0 to 40 mile per hour launch out of the tunnel and into a 0G roll. Plunging down the attraction's largest drop, guests travel 105 feet down before going up a cobra roll over Islands of Adventures Lagoon. Then, entering the coaster's hallmark vertical loop, the ride car goes through a mist tunnel before traveling around the queue building and entering a corkscrew and a second vertical loop. After a few turns, a mid-course brake run slows the ride car momentarily before a small drop takes riders through another corkscrew. After going through a helix and banking a couple more corners, guests are slowed before returning to the show building where they can unload and exit the attraction. Launching as an opening day attraction for Universal Studios' Islands of Adventure, the Incredible Hulk coaster was met with widespread acclaim from critics and guests. With great theming, a one-of-a-kind launch, and a plethora of inversions, the coaster offered one of the most thrilling experiences in all of Orlando. While the Hulk was not the only coaster at Islands of Adventure when it launched with Dueling Dragons offering a similarly thrilling experience at the back of the park, its height and placement at the front of the park has made it an icon for Islands of Adventure since its launch in 1999. While the Hulk was not the most popular superhero at the time of the coaster's release, with the film industry's several attempts at bringing the character to life in the years that followed, as well as Mark Ruffalo's classic portrayal of Bruce Banner in the MCU, the coaster's theming has continued to age well alongside the rest of Marvel Superhero Island. With over 20 years of operation, the Incredible Hulk coaster is still a fantastic ride, but Universal would choose to majorly refurbish the attraction in 2016, overhauling everything from the show building, queue video, soundtrack, launch tunnel, and track pieces. The attraction is still the same classic coaster with a new coat of paint. With the ride story being shifted from focusing on Bruce Banner to one of his enemies, General Thunderbolt Ross, guests now walk through an arch of broken coaster track that was salvaged from the original attraction. Entering the showroom, guests walk into the Gamma Radiation Lab where they will participate in Ross's experiment. With a new Q video and fully rendered CGI, Ross explains that he has developed a new technology that will recreate the accident that turned Banner into the Hulk and plans to turn guests into their own green creature. Passing new Q elements like the Gamma Core, revamped power tubes, and larger HD screens, guests then make their way into the updated loading dock. While the coaster's layout is exactly the same, every piece of the track has been replaced to offer riders a smoother experience on the attraction. Alongside a new launch tunnel with updated effects and a score by Fall Out Boy's frontman Patrick Stump, the updated version of the Incredible Hulk coaster retains the thrill of the original attraction while bringing it into the future. While the coaster is a mainstay of Orlando's resort and is one of the most unique launched coasters in the world, Universal and B&M would partner once again to bring a version of the attraction to Universal's Beijing theme park. Located in the Transformers Metro Base area of the park, the Decepticoaster is a nearly 
nearly exact replica of the Incredible Hulk with a Transformers coat of paint. With guests boarding a similar ride car, guests enter a tunnel themed to a driller, a large tentacle monster depicted in the Dart of the Moon film. While the layout is very similar to the Hulk's, the track's path has been updated to offer a smoother experience for riders with some of the attraction's elements being toned down for comfort. Opening with the park on September 20th, 2021, the Decepticoaster was met with similar acclaim, with Universal Studios Beijing as a whole being one of the most advanced Universal parks in the world. Even though the Incredible Hulk coaster is over 20 years old and Universal Creative has put out some of the most advanced and groundbreaking attractions of all time since its release, the attraction continues to be one of the best rides at Islands of Adventure and is a favorite to many. And with its 2016 refurbishment fixing several aspects of the ride that had begun to show wear and tear, the coaster looks to have a bright future in the years to come. Let me know down in the comments what you think of the Incredible Hulk coaster and thank you so much for watching. Consider subscribing if you'd like to stick around for more theme park lore and I'll see you in the next video.